You guys are probably ready to ride some dang Elixir by now. We are almost ready to do that, I promise. We need to get Elixir installed and ready to use on our machines first. Now there are a few ways that we can do this and let's head over to Erlang, uh, I mean er Elixir-Lang.org. We can look at all the ways. The easiest way to install a version of Elixir is directly. Now we aren't going to do it the easiest way. But if you'd like, just follow the steps here. We are going to use a version manager called ASDF. You might be wondering what a version manager is. A version manager allows us to have multiple versions of something. In our case, Elixir and Erlang. We need both, but we'll get more into that in just a little bit. Why might we want more than one version? Well, sometimes having the latest version of things just doesn't work with all projects. There could be other dependencies that aren't updated to work with the latest and greatest, or you could just be working on a project for a specific reason or task and updating everything doesn't make sense for your resources and time. So you can just change the version of Elixir you're using with a couple of keystrokes. I should mention you can use this for Node.js and other languages. So let's open another tab and we're going to go to asdf-vm.com and we're going to go to the get started guide now as you can see this is only going to work if you're on linux or mac but there are a few ways you can install it on windows the same way just follow the windows installation guide on elixir-lang.org we are going to use homebrew to install asdf i should show you here so i'm looking at the install dependencies and I see that homebrew is our option. So we don't have homebrew installed yet. So we're going to go to brew.sh or you can Google homebrew and you'll get there the same way. Now homebrew is a tool that helps us install things on our Mac or Linux machines. We could even directly install Elixir with homebrew. All we have to do is copy and paste this command to our terminal. Let's open up our terminal and just paste that command. And it wants our password. Um, press enter to continue. All right, now to make sure or to check that brew is installed, we have to do brew space dash dash version. And I got a command not found brew. And so this means that homebrew's path is not properly added to our shell. In my case, I need to create an add brews path to my uh, .zshrc file. I'm going to use Vim as my text editor. You can use Nano or whatever you prefer, but you need to Vim into the file. So I'm going to just do vim.zshrc, all right. And then you can kind of put it anywhere you want. We'll put it underneath my, oh, my ZSH path. And just, you're going to have to hit I so you can insert things into our text file. And that's only if you're using Vim. Um, Nano, you're on your own. I'm not a fan of Nano and I can never figure it out. And then, so all we have to do is say export um, space path all capital and then say equals with no space and then inside of quotations we need to put the path to homebrew since i'm on a, a m1 or you know the silicon chip my path is going to be an opt forward slash homebrew forward slash bin and then um, we're just going to set this to the path Okay, and your path, if you're not, if you're on an Intel system, it probably could be user USR forward slash local forward slash bin. And then you would still do the colon dollar sign path after it. And so if you're on a silicone chip, great, copy me. If you're on an Intel chip, you're going to do forward slash USR forward slash local forward slash bin and then everything else is the same. And then we need to hit escape and then to uh, save this and quit, we're going to do colon W for write and then Q to quit. And that saves it. 
And now we need to apply our changes by either restarting the terminal so you can quit the terminal or we can just do, uh, we can source it with source tilde uh, forward slash dot Z S H R C and hit enter. And it looks like I have a typo probably in my ZSHRC file on line seven. Yes, it helps. So I to insert and then T and then escape colon WQ again. And then we can run the source tilde forward slash dot ZSHRC. And now we should be able to check our brew version. So brew space dash dash version. And look at that homebrew 4.1.21. So everything is working. So now we need to head back over to our ASDF tab. Hi, I'm Jacob. I help companies build scalable fault tolerance systems in Elixir. With over a decade of experience, I specialize in solving complex technical challenges, whether that's architecting new systems, implementing real-time processing, or scaling existing applications. I work with teams worldwide to deliver high-performance solutions that deliver results. If you need help with your next Elixir project, visit elixirmentor.com to schedule a call. We need to install ASDF with brew. We just need to type uh, brew install ASDF. So right here, if you scroll down and I'm ignoring the dependencies because we already have them or they'll be added when we install this. So all we have to do is go back to our terminal and now we just say a brew space install space ASDF. All right, now we need to add, if we scroll down, so there are many different combinations of shells and all that good stuff. And we need to add the path to um, the ASDF script in our .zshrc file, just like we did when we installed Homebrew. And if you look through all this, we I have to go down to ZSH and Homebrew Basically, if you're running Catalina or later, this is probably going to be the option that you need. And what's really cool is they gave us this little snippet. We don't even have to use Vim and open up our file. We can just run this command and it will automatically paste it in our ZSHRC file. So go ahead and copy this and then pull up terminal and then copy and paste and hit enter. And then just for fun, let's do vim.zshrc. And if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, you'll see this path, OPT homebrew, OPT ASDF, all that stuff, then the asdf.sh script. So this adds the script to our ZSHRC file. Every time that shell boots up, it will run this script. So um, that way ASDF is going to be running. And now we can just quit out of this. So escape colon. And since we didn't make any changes and if we accidentally did, we just wanna quit and then exclamation point. So nothing gets saved. Now we need to apply our changes again with we can either source it like we did before or you can quit terminal and reopen. Let's go back to the ASDF tab and we want to, on the left side here, click on plugins and we need to install Erlang and that will route us to GitHub. And so now we can just run, we can run ASDF plugin add Erlang. We don't need the URL after it. So go back to our terminal and now if we do ASDF plugin add Erlang. Now we'll download it from the repository. All right, and then let's go back to the ASDF tab and find Elixir. For Elixir, we need to add unzip and we can do this. We don't have to do the app to get. We can actually use brew for this. So go ahead and go in your terminal and just say brew install unzip. All right, and that's done. And then it's as simple as doing ASDF 
plugin add elixir all right and now with the plugins added added we can now install whatever version we want of erlang and an elixir we'll do the latest version since we want the latest we're just starting to build right so to do that we can do asdf install erlang and then you could put a version number here or latest if you want the latest stable release all right and then to install elixir asdf space uh install elixir latest all right and then if we do asdf list we can now see right here that we have erlang 1.15.7 otp 26. so that means it requires erlang 26 and then you'll see erlang 26.1.2 is there so those are the packages that are installed then to set them to be used we have to just we can do asdf global uh erlang and then we can just say latest all right and now global means we're setting this version to be used on our whole machine let's say you have one project that uses a different version you can do asdf local and then the same erlang latest or whatever version you're doing inside that directory and then it, it will um, locally use a different version instead of globally setting it which is kind of cool. I have typos. I said lastest, so latest. All right, and then ASDF global elixir latest. All right, pretty cool. And then if we do ASDF list again, you're going to see that we have asterisks next to them. Like, like so up here, we did not. And then down here we do. So now they're set to be used on our machine. Now, if we want to see what current version is being used on our system, I can just do Elixir space dash dash V. Uh, maybe it's dash V. There we go. Um, and now you see that we have 1.15.7. And I believe Erlang, you can do ERL dash dash v and it kind of opens up a shell but you can see that we have otp 26 running and to get out of here we can just control c twice since we are here i'll quickly show you how to see all the versions available and how to switch between them so using asdf you can say list dash all and then whatever package you're looking for so we want to see all the versions of elixir and there we go that's a lot of versions right then we can go through the same steps we did already instead of using the latest um so let's just grab a version here so we can do uh, asdf install elixir and then we want 1-14-4-otp 24. so that's how you would pick a specific version and then we can hit enter and then we can do ASDF list and you can see that now we have another version of Elixir on our system, but it's not selected. And then you'd set the version globally or locally like we did already. And that's how you would switch between them. So you get the point. We are well on our way to write in some Elixir. We got Elixir and Erlang both installed using a version manager, making it very easy to jump between versions. So let's wrap this video up and I will see you in the next video.